Hi, I'm Sarah Shwirep and in this video we are going to discuss placenta previa. So placenta previa is when the placenta implants in the lower segment of the uterus. So as we can see in this image over here, the placenta has implanted low down in the uterus and is completely covering the internal loss. Therefore, this is also referred to as a complete placenta previa. Over here, the placenta has also implanted low down in the uterus, but is not covering the internal loss. However, the placental edge is less than 2 cm away from the internal loss, and this is referred to as a low-lying placenta. A normal placenta, on the other hand, will have implanted in the upper part of the uterus, or at least more than 2 cm away from the internal loss. Placenta previa occurs in 1 in 200 term pregnancies. Now, why do we specifically quote this figure at term? So basically because earlier in pregnancy, the placenta is more likely to be low-lying. However, this appears to move upwards as the pregnancy continues. This is because of the formation of the lower segment in the third trimester. Therefore, only 1 in 10 apparent low-lying placentas will actually be previa at term. Now, why does this happen? So essentially we don't really know why in these women the placenta implants slow down. However, we do know that this may be related to decreased vascularization of the upper endometrium. And this could be secondary to a previous C-section, previous uterine surgery and multiparity. These can all decrease vascularization and increase the risk of placenta previa. Other risk factors include multiple pregnancy, as there may be multiple placentas or a large placenta occupying a larger surface area. Advanced maternal age as well as smoking have also been found to increase the risk of placenta previa. Okay, so the clinical features next. So some women may be completely asymptomatic, but others may present with vaginal bleeding. This usually occurs after 20 weeks and therefore is referred to as antepartum hemorrhage. The bleeding is bright red, but it is not associated with any pain, therefore we have painless bleeding. This is in contrast over here to placental abruption, which we mentioned in the previous video, where patients present with painful bleeding. In some cases, there may also be an unstable lie, as the placenta is in the way, not allowing the head to be engaged. So a breach presentation and transverse lie are common. Next, let's have a look at the complications associated with placenta previa. So the one thing we worry about the most is hemorrhage over here. So not only can there be bleeding associated with stretching and opening of the cervical os and contractions, but during and after delivery, this may be associated with a lot of bleeding. And this is mainly because of the inability of the lower segment of the uterus to contract and constrict the blood supply. Placenta previa is also associated with the placenta accreta spectrum. So when a placenta implants in a previous C-section scar, it may implant very deep into the tissues, making it very difficult to separate from the uterine wall. So here in the first image we have a scarred uterus and a placenta which appears to be low-lying, but with normal implantation. In the next images we can see that the placenta has invaded deeper and deeper into the myometrium, and these are called placenta accreta, placenta increta, and placenta percreta. And they are distinguished depending on their depth of invasion, as we're going to see in the next image. So in placenta accreta, the villi are attached to the myometrium, but do not invade the muscle. In placenta increta, the villi partially invade the myometrium, and in placenta percreta, the villi invade up to or beyond the uterine serosa. Okay, so next diagnosis. So most of the time, placenta previas are diagnosed before they present with bleeding. And this, of course, is carried out using ultrasound. So the anomaly scan serves as a screening tool for us to identify the location of the placenta. If the placenta is low-lying or previa, we will need to repeat the ultrasound because, as we said, most placentas will migrate upwards throughout the pregnancy. So the ultrasound is repeated at 32 weeks to confirm placental location, with both a transabdominal and transvaginal ultrasound scan being performed to increase the accuracy. 
Now, finally, for the management. So if patients with a placenta previa have a minor bleed, they would merely only require bed rest. The aim here is to prolong the pregnancy as far as possible to prevent preterm delivery. But if we have a major bleed, then we must consider delivery. With a placenta previa, the mode of delivery is always by cesarean section, in both an emergency and elective setting. Blood must certainly be available, as you said that there is a high risk of hemorrhage, and if preterm, we give steroids. So as a note over here, don't forget that whenever we have bleeding in pregnancy, we need to check the recess status of the mother, so that we administer anti-D if she is recess negative. You can revert the video on placental abruption for more information about this. Now, in asymptomatic patients, we perform an elective cesarean section at 39 weeks. Great. So if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.